Dave and I were leading a high school youth group here in town, and one of our favorite things to do in that youth group was to show these video Bible studies that were called NUMA, and they were awesome. <laughs> Some of you are familiar with them. Then there was a chance to meet the man who led all of these video Bible studies called NUMA. He came to Indiana. We were overjoyed, and we packed a bus, and we traveled to Indianapolis to see the man, the myth, the legend, Rob Bell. Thank you, Luke. It's these booze. We got to meet Rob Bell, and after a show where we watched him perform live, we got to go and, like, touch him and say hello to him. Is there a problem with my mic? Oh, Take it off. Okay, so I was excited about this. Our youth was excited, were excited about this, but even more was Dave excited about this. And I don't think Dave's even gotten over it yet because if you've seen the small groups that are being advertised for this fall, he is doing, leading a small group called Kicking It Old School with Numa. <laughs> we firmly believe as a couple that if leg warmers and mom jeans can come back into style, then so can Numa videos. So we're all about it. Thank you. One of the things, though, that I do love about Rob Bell, and people have very polarized opinions about this man, but he is a pastor and he is a teacher, and I love that he is also an incredible storyteller. In my life, when I was first introduced to Rob Bell videos, I had never understood scripture in the way that he made it. It's never been as accessible to me in the way that he made it so. And one of the stories that Rob Bell tells and that is ingrained in me forever is of being at this hospital. As a pastor, he was often visiting the people from his church in this hospital. And he tells the story of walking down the hallway of this hospital and one day he was called to go into this room where a family from his church had just had their first baby. The joy and the excitement was palpable. Their life was never going to be the same after this moment. And then a few weeks later, Rob walks into that same hospital, is walking that same hallway where a family from his church has just lost a child. And as we've told these stories in this series, it has been that way. It has been one extreme or another because often it is those events in our life that are extreme on the emotional spectrum that we remember, that we feel make up our lives. We've talked about Abraham and Sarah who, well beyond their childbearing years, had a child named Isaac. And then we talked about Moses who led his people, he saw this burning bush and led his people out of uh, Egypt to the promised land, but then he was told, you won't get to go to the promised land. These extreme stories. We seldom hear the stories of the everyday of these people's lives, like what was Moses doing right before he came upon that bush that was burning but not consumed? What were Abraham and Sarah doing the first hundred years of their lives before they became parents, right? Though I must say there are some chapters in scripture where there are oddly specific details about how to build a boat and how to decorate a temple. So it's odd, the details that we do get in scripture. Today we're going to look at another one of those more extreme stories of Jesus calling his disciples into ministry. From their everyday life as fishermen, just living in the, the hallway, that everyday tasks to be done, in order, and then being called to drop everything and enter into a com completely changed lives. So at this point, Jesus had been around. Jesus was this rabbi who was preaching and teaching in different ways. Crowds were following, so this wasn't, this was someone that the, the, the men who had become the disciples were familiar with. Let's go ahead and look at scripture, Mark 1, verses 16 to 20. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net. 
into the sea, for they were fishermen. This was their identity. They were fishermen and probably their fathers and probably their grandfathers. This was who they are. This was their purpose. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and they followed Jesus. Sometimes God calls us in these huge moments, those moments where we know once we make this choice, once I cross this threshold, nothing will ever be the same again. My entire life is going to change at this moment. And I can tell you, and I often do tell you, about how a life in Christ is not boring or mundane. I stand up here a lot of times and talk about the crazy, awesome leaps of faith that I have witnessed people take and that my family has taken, and God does do these awesome things when we're open to hearing and responding to God's call. I believe that we get to live the full height and depth and width of our lives when we do so. I believe that with all of my heart. But I also know we can hear these extreme stories and feel so disconnected from scripture, thinking that's not me. That's not a call that will ever come upon my life. Or, God, I've asked you to call me in these big ways, and you haven't. And then we disconnect from Scripture instead of plugging in in a deeper way. The truth is, though, we spend most of our life in the hallways, don't we? Most of our life is made up of the day-to-day -day and not those extreme situations. Sure, there's that first day of work. If you can remember when you were at a job you were excited about and you thought, I have prepared for this my whole life. I am educated for this. I'm going to go in and do this job better than it's ever been done before. I am going to change people's lives with this job. And then there's like the 505th day of work when your coffee is cold and the copy machine is broken and you can't wait to go home at the end of the day that routine day to day. There's that day that you receive the letter that you got into the grad school program that you've been waiting for and you are so excited. And then there are the days of writing papers and the weeks and months of the work that it requires. We have these exciting moments in life, but most of our days are spent in the mundane, just everyday life. But I believe with all of my heart that God calls us in the midst of the hallways, in the midst of the same routine that we do every single day. God is calling you and God is calling me. When we live in radical love and generosity, when we live those Christian lives that we pray each week in our prayer statement that we want to live more and more better and better, those Christ-like lives, we plug into the Spirit of God that is calling us. And the more we do so, the more we get glimpses of the awesome love and joy and peace of God. Some call that heaven and are waiting for that moment when all things are okay. I will simply call that God. For why wait until we die to plug into that incredible love? Why wait to have those moments when God is calling us every day to be aware of God's presence with us and around us always? Have you seen a butterfly emerge from a chrysalis? Have you been in love? Have you seen a puppy? <laughs> have you ever lived in that moment that you wished would never end, that you just wish you could hold on to forever? Whatever you call it, those are the moments given to us by God, promised by God for all of eternity, and that God calls us to share every single day. Take that moment 
to hold the door for someone. Stop and breathe in the cool air of fall or uh, enjoy the shade of a warm summer day in central Illinois, both in the same day maybe. <laughs> Speak to the cashier by name. Look them in the eye and wish them a great day. Put down the phone and have a conversation. Send your grandma a handwritten note. Tell that person how much they mean to you. Let the person in front of you in traffic, even though they waited till the last moment to merge. <laughs> though you may remember clearly the highs and the lows of life, those may be the things we use to define ourselves. Our lives are truly made in the hallways, in our everyday. Everyone is called. God didn't wait till Moses went to the right place or showed up where he was supposed to. God didn't wait for the disciples to clean up at the end of the night after being in their boats and fishing. He called them exactly where they were. God is wherever you are at this moment and you are called. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for the stories that have been written that have gotten our lives to where they are today. And God, we pray that we will see you, that we will notice you in the tiny details and in the big moments that you have given us as gifts. May we plug in, may we recognize, may we connect to your great love here and now in all of the ways that you present to us. Amen.